thoughts on what this means for the industry and some of the trends we're seeing with Shelly Palmer. He's the CEO of the Palmer Group, and he joins me here at the New York Stock Exchange. Shelly, nice to see you. Nice thanks to you to, too. Thanks for coming to our new digs. Yeah, great. Um, let, let me ask you, uh, just pick up on the Samsung issue. <clears throat> um, you know, this is really their event. Apple doesn't go. This is where they could have really knocked it out of the park. Are they still struggling, or do we just need to give them more time? Yeah, it's a really hard question to answer, not being, you know, at Samsung, but I'll say that Mobile World Congress is a big global show, and it's more about cell phone towers than it is product announcements. They'd like it to be about product announcements. LG's got an announcement, of course, so Samsung has to make an announcement. But in practice, all these companies, Apple and Samsung, and all of the big companies, stage their own real events that they control. So this is the Mobile World Congress stage. I think they wanted to announce something. They did. They announced some tablets. Um, there's a leak that says that the Note 8 and whatever it's going or whatever it's going to be is just around the corner. I'm not going to speculate on the rumors, yeah. but I will say that Samsung has only one thing they have to do. They have to play their way out of this. Yeah. The Note 8 better blow my mind. Yeah. It better be the greatest handheld device in the history of the world. It's got to have the best screen, best battery life. And no pressure. No pressure, and, Samsung. And, and the best everything. And by the yeah. way, it can't explode. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, so keep, your, keep your eyes focused on so that. So if, if that's all they do, like, like the Note 7, but for the battery issue, was really one of the best cell phones best at, like, heard, yeah. like ever made. Yeah. And th they got part of it wrong, and they know what they did wrong, and they worked really hard to try and make sure that doesn't happen again. So that's fine. I'll, you know, look, give them a pass. They yeah. did the best they could. No one was seriously injured. They worked really hard to get it back. But if this phone isn't the next coming of the Lord, yeah. they're going to have some issues. Yeah, but I mean, listen, it's so competitive in that space. It is. And, and look, the only way you can make me care is to build me a device I want to own. And by the way, when that happens, we've seen consumers have a very short memory when it comes to problems in the past and are willing to forgive, as we've seen with cars and who knows what else. So you make me the new, new thing, and I want to carry it. That's right, and I want to carry it, and that's going to be the end of it. I want to ask you, you, as you mentioned, it's more about cell towers and product stuff. They're also trying to make it much more about AI, not surprisingly, because AI is everywhere and is invading everything now. Mm -hmm. um, what are you watching in that space? So it is really important to understand that um, NLU, Natural Language Understanding, and ASI, our automatic speech, speech recognition are what is happening in 2017. Um, so most people associate that with Amazon's Echo and Alexa voice services where you can build a skill and say, Alexa, turn on the lights. Sorry, everybody whose lights just went on. <laughs> um, I won't actually use a bunch of real commands, yeah. but because but, from TV that'll work because it has automatic speech recognition. Google's going to bring Google Home into the marketplace with all of the Android apps behind it. And pretty soon, anything you can talk to is going to listen to you and understand you including your mobile devices. And uh, it's going to change our world in a pretty profound way. The technology is ready. Now, that's on the recognition side or, and the understanding side. So it will know what you're asking. The question is, can it deliver an emotionally satisfying or meaningful answer? Because that's the other side that's of this equation, side. right? I do feel like we, we've, we've sort of turned the corner, though. Now, a lot of us are coming in contact with it, and it makes sense to us finally. You know, I think that's what Alexa and some of these home products did. Everything was connected before. We just didn't want to bother well, or know. That's now right. it seems like, oh, okay, I'm here. That's you know? right. There was no, like, really compelling consumer yeah. value proposition. But you think about a mobile device and the app, right? So let's say you have a Crestron and let's say you've got light controllers of any kind. You walk in the house and you say... Um, you want to turn your lights on. You got to open your phone. That's with a swipe or tap to find the app. Open the app. Do whatever thing yeah. on there. There's four taps. Then you want to. So I walk in and go, Alexa, turn the lights on in the kitchen. Alexa, I want to go read in the living room. And it does it. That, I mean, that is a compelling okay. consumer value prop, and you're that's what's happening. You're totally right. Come back and talk to us on the interesting products and whoever you think is out in the lead on this, because now it's blown wide open and it's anybody's game, I think. Shelly, always great to see you. Great Thank to see you, you so too. much. We spent a lot of time apologizing to Alexa in our house, too. <laughs>